Welcome back, you guys. Your boy CK. Now, right now, Jason Witten is an unretired, bald veteran tight end for the Las Vegas Raiders. Through six games, he has six receptions for only 29 yards and a touchdown. So we know this is not the best he has to offer. What if we gave this man a full head of hair <laughs> and turned him into a 97 like he was back in Madden 11? How much impact would it have? Let's find out. If you guys play Ultimate Team and you want to get some coins, make sure to check out my sponsor, Link in the description muttreserve.com use my code ck and i promise you you'll be rich one day but in the meantime you'll get 15 percent off your order now i got a quick announcement before we get started i'm gonna be streaming over on facebook i'll leave the link in the description for the rest of my videos and also in the pinned comment you can follow if you like live streams and things of that nature i'm gonna be streaming among us 2k madden fall guys whatever comes to mind so be sure to follow if you don't want to miss out now you've already seen the raiders ratings Witten is now the the new number one tight end we have waller at an 89 he's gonna be in the 90s very soon travis kelsey has not been a 99 at launch yet in any madden i don't know why they won't just give him that rate kittle's currently a 97 his highest was a 98 which was his launch rating this year but the real story of the niners is jordan reed he's gonna go from an 84 overall to a 94 overall like he was and mad 19 niners have by far the best duo of tight ends in this experiment mark andrews is already at the highest overall he's ever been i try to do at least one per team but sometimes all the tight ends were really young so there was really no changes to make hooper actually went up two overalls from an 87 to an 89 and jaku goes up three overalls he was an 82 in madden 20 for as consistent as jared cook has been in his career i was surprised to see he was never in the 90s man 87 is his highest overall evan ingram started madden 21 with an 88 overall and levine toilolo goes up seven overalls from a 66 to a 73 which is what he was in madden 19 hunter henry was an 88 back in madden 19 and virgil green goes up nine overalls to an 81 that was his rating in madden 18 so the chargers now have two 80 plus overall tight ends the eagles have two as well Ertz goes up eight overalls overalls from an 85 to a 93 which was his rate in last year goddard is currently at the highest overall he's ever been so that's another solid duo but the buccaneers have a solid trio cameron bray has been doing it for a long time he was an 83 back in madden 18 he goes up eight overalls oj howard goes up four overalls he was an 84 back in madden 20 but there's only 199 he goes by the name of gronk that was his rating well in multiple maddens but most recently in madden 19 the, the buccaneers are insane but don't sleep on the seahawks and greg olsen he goes up nine overalls from an 82 to a 93 which was his rating in madden 17 luke wilson goes up double digit overalls from a 68 to an 81 which is what he was in madden 16 rudolph goes up two overalls for the vikings to an 86 which was his rating in madden 19 ebron goes from an 82 to an 86 which was his rating in Madden 20. Vance to make him dance McDonald goes from a 74 to an 83. That's what he was last year in Madden 20. Tyler Higby stays the same. Yo, there's nothing wrong with staying the same. That just means you're playing the best ball of your career. Same with Gasicki. Stays at an 83. Shaheen though is probably mad that I mispronounced his name. I apologize. But he goes up nine overalls from a 67 to a 76 which was his rating in Madden 19. On a coach Jack Doyle goes up five overalls to an 85 from Madden 20 but we all remember when Trey Burton threw that touchdown in the Super Bowl during the Philly special well he was well rewarded with an 87 back in Madden 20 so now the Colts have two 85 plus overall tight ends on the Falcons Hayden Hurst stays the same and it's crazy how the Falcons have a J. Graham on their team he's just not as good as this one even though this one's currently a 78 in Madden 21 it wasn't too long ago when he was a higher overall than Gronk. Madden 15, this man was a 97. He goes up a whopping 19 overalls. Demetrius Harris goes up a respectable plus six. John New stays the same on the Titans. Jeff Swain goes up six overalls to a 73. And then Michael Pruitt goes up five overalls to a 72. There are some guys that were sneaky elite who may have had one or two amazing seasons, like Tyler Eifert, who's currently a 76, but only a few years ago in Madden 18, he was a 91. So Jacksonville now has an elite tight end on their roster. On the Broncos, a lot of young guys, no offense, stays the same. Vanette goes up six overalls to a 75, which was his rating at a 20. And then it's back to another sneaky elite guy, Mercedes Lewis. 
currently a 75 overall on the Packers. He was a 90 back in Madden 12 to Packers. Once again, have an elite tight end on the roster. On the Cardinals, Max Williams goes up four overalls to his rating in Madden 17. On the Texans, not much change. Darren Fell stays at a 75. On the Bills, Lee Smith goes up two overalls. He's been known to be like a blocking tight end for the most part. But Croft goes up eight overalls. He was a 79 in Madden 19. On the Bengals, Uzoma goes up six overalls. He was a 78 in Madden 20. Jarwin goes up one overall. He was a 73 in Madden 20. Herndon goes up five overalls. He was a 76 in Madden 20. Griffin goes up three overalls. On the Panthers, Ian Thomas goes up three overalls. He was a 73 in Madden 20. On the Patriots, Lacoste goes up four overalls. He's now the number one tight end. And last but not least, the football team, they all stay the same. Who is going to have the biggest impact? I mean, it could be Gronk. A 99 tight end is going to be extremely hard to stop, especially when you have 280 pluses behind you. But Witten going to a 97. Him and Waller is going to be a nasty combination. Jimmy Graham was no slouch in his prime. Of course, you can't forget about Kittle and Kelsey, man. Jordan Reed with all that speed. Bars rhyming accidentally, man. Let me know in the comments who you think is gonna win this Super Bowl, man. Destroy the like button and let me know what you wanna see next. I'm not sure if I should do the offensive line. Not because I'm lazy or, you know, I don't wanna do five per team, but I don't know if it's something you guys care about, man. Should I just move on to the defensive line or maybe skip that too and go to linebackers? Let me know. But let's check out the stats of these tight ends at the end of the season. Patriots end up with the best record in the NFL. All they needed was a plus four overall increase from Matt Lacoste. End up second, so two teams who don't have an 80 plus plus overall tight end. The Packers though. With help from Mercedes Lewis, they end up with the two seed in the NFC. The Seahawks with Olsen's increase end up 11-5. Saints end up 11-5. The Buccaneers with Gronk being a 99 definitely helped them get to 11-5. Bunch of teams at 10-6. Chiefs end up 9-7. The Steelers with Ebron's slight increase didn't make it. The Eagles didn't make it with Ertz getting back to a 93. The Bears with Jimmy Graham didn't make it. I thought for sure he would have helped them get Get to the playoffs and the Raiders went 5 and 11 with Jason Witten being a 97 man I cannot explain that one but who cares about the standings let's look at the individual stats Witten almost had a thousand yard season that's all we care about Waller had way more receiving touchdowns however Higby had a decent season for the Rams on the Ravens it was Mark Andrews who led the way in terms of the tight end position on the football team Logan Thomas of course was their number one on the Saints Jared Cook almost had a thousand yards, nine touchdowns to go along with it. Amazing season from him. Look at Olsen though, 972, seven touchdowns. Man, these tight ends were going crazy. On the Steelers, it was Ebron who was the number one man. He led the way, took a lot of targets away from Vance. Darren Fells had a decent season on the Texans. On the Titans, John New with 749 to four touchdowns. Kyle Rudolph, 783. On the Bears though, you know what time it was. Jimmy Graham, our first. First tight end to get to a thousand yards receiving in this simulation. Man, seven touchdowns to go along with it. He did his job. Okay, Uzoma did his job as well. 895 and five touchdowns. Tyler Croft with 1,100 yards Jesus. and six touchdowns. He was going insane. On the Broncos, Noah Fan with 853. Not too shabby at all. Austin Hooper led the way with 12 touchdowns for the Browns and 819 yards to go along with it. The trio in Tampa Bay, all produced in different ways. Gronkowski led them in receptions, receiving yards. But Bray led them in receiving touchdowns, man. That's a beautiful trio. Won't be surprised to see them in the Super Bowl in the simulation, okay? Max Williams, decent season for the Cardinals. Virgil Green and Hunter Henry both had insane seasons. They had to be like the top two, maybe two of the top three targets on the Chargers. I mean, they combined for 16 touchdowns, over 1,600 yards. Kelsey got a lot of targets taken from him by, I'm guessing, some wide receivers because 588, six touchdowns, he could do way better than that. Trey Burton at an 87 overall, almost had a thousand yard season, six touchdowns. He killed it on the Colts. Blake Jarwin stayed the same, but he actually had a really good season for the Cowboys. Cowboys Gasicki 753 touchdowns shout out to the Nittany Lion man he's killing it 
on the Dolphins. Zach Ertz was 795, five touchdowns. Goddard only had one touchdown on the season on the Falcons. We had Hayden Hurts with 775 and four touchdowns, not too shabby. And then the Niners. How did their duo end up doing? Pretty good, combining them for over 1,500 yards and eight touchdowns. I'm not gonna lie, I was expecting a little bit more, but I guess the wide receivers took some touches away from them on the Giants. Ingram was 652 and four. The Jaguars with Eifert in the 90s. Couldn't make the playoffs, but Eifert still had a good season. It's 728, seven touchdowns on the Jets. Herndon, I believe, stayed the same or maybe went up a slight over on increase. Still had a decent season. Hawkinson, 624 and five touchdowns on the Packers. Mercedes Lewis, 649 and five touchdowns. Not bad at all. Ian Thomas on the Panthers had a great season. Lacoste had a thousand yards for the Patriots. This man was barely in the 70s and he had one of the best seasons. No surprises here, Cam Newton wins MVP, and I don't think I've ever seen a tight end in the top 10. It's not gonna happen in this one. OPOY, it could happen. I, it, it's possible, right? I mean, I've seen running backs in here, but hey, not in this simulation. They don't even have a best tight end tab. So disrespectful, man. So, so there's just no way for them to get recognition. That's what they're pretty much telling us right now. It's really bad. They need to add that next year, I'm sorry. So in the wild card round, the Colts beat the Bills, the Chiefs with Kelsey, beat out the Jets the Ravens beat the Browns the Saints beat the Buccaneers in their three-headed tandem at tight end man that is crazy the Niners wallop the Seahawks two great tight ends are better than one that's what we saw right there and then the Vikings beat the Packers divisional round the Ravens beat the Patriots in a thriller the Vikings beat the Cowboys the Colts beat the Chiefs and then the Niners once again that duo with Reed and Kittle's just too much. Conference championship, they beat the Vikings, 31-28, and then the Ravens beat the Colts. We have a rematch of Super Bowl 47 between the Niners and the Ravens. Not really surprised to see the Niners here. Hopefully you guys predicted them as your NFC team. I mean, once you saw two 94 plus overall tight ends, it was pretty much a given. Let's see how often both of them are on the field. Oh, they're on the field together right now. Jordan Reed gets the first down. I saw first hand. Jordan Reed used to be on the football team, just wreaking havoc on my Eagles. When healthy, the man was an athletic specimen. I haven't seen him too much this year, but uh, I think he's doing pretty well. I'm glad he's still healthy. Hopefully he never experiences another concussion ever again in his career, man. And that's what I'm hoping for. Look at the burst of speed. The blocking was just immaculate. And Mostert's going to get the easy touchdown to put the Niners up. AFC was a little bit tougher to predict. Because you still had teams that were really good. Who already had really good tight ends. Lamar almost throws an interception. That would have been a terrible start. But yeah, no one in the AFC... Besides like Witten or maybe Eifert, you know, I, I don't know. There wasn't teams that were really good that had a huge increase in overall from the tight ends. So it's a little bit tougher to predict. However, I didn't predict that the Ravens would go three now in the first drive. They're going to have to punt. Let's see how this one ends up. It's the Niners who get revenge and win this Super Bowl. So this is what would happen, man. It wasn't too hard to predict. There was just too much talent at the tight end position for any team to stop. That's really what it came down to. So let me know who's next. What position are we going to put every player at their highest overall in any Madden, man? Thank you so much for watching. If you want these videos faster, man, I need you guys to destroy the like button. Keep on showing that same energy as you have been in the last few videos, man. I appreciate the support so much. Subscribe if you're new around here, man. The goal is 250K by the end of the year. I know we can make it happen. Have a good rest of your day. And I'll see you on the next one.